Hello everyone and welcome to my shop. Let's see, we've uh, concluded the uh, engine swap. <laughs> my shameless plug for the engine swap series. And now I'm in the uh, fine tuning stages of this engine. We read the uh, the plugs and the uh, in the uh, the last of that engine swap series, and uh, they were all six in excellent shape. They showed that the engine is uh, pretty much jetted good. Uh, there's nothing, no mechanical failures imminent, uh, basically because there's no deposits on them. So we're going to continue fine tuning. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got a slight change. Uh, I'm going to put the timing back to uh, top dead center on number one uh, uh, number one cylinder and then I'm going to use the uh, octane selector to actually change uh, my uh, the timing to advance instead of using my marks on the side I'm gonna I'm gonna use what uh, Chevrolet actually provided factory for adjusting timing now the timing was adjusted based on the quality of gas that was available back in the day. The better the octane, the more you could advance it. So what I'm going to do is utilize that scale. That's a 0 to 10 advanced and a 0 to 10 uh, retarded. And I'll utilize that for my timing. So let's get to tuning this thing up. alone so I'm going to continue to play with this thing and get it where I want. It's idling pretty good but if you look it's real close to uh, 750 almost 800 rpm. Now that's still a little too high. The engine's warmed up but that's where it's smooth and if you look at my vacuum gauge you can see it's right on the edge of being selector to do my timing setting. I try to use my uh, timing light and it's way off the charts and I can't even tell from the timing light where it's at. It's so advanced now. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. The timing is going to retard. It's going to really slow down when I retard that timing up. I'm sorry, the idle will. So hold on. Oh, 
setting it now is uh, top dead center, zero degrees advance. The idle has dropped down to almost 650 RPM, so it's dropped almost 200 RPM. And the vacuum gauge has dropped down into about 14 and a half, 15 inches of vacuum. So what I want to do now is I'm going to adjust the timing via the octane selector. That's a half inch wrench. Just to the left of the slash, the slash being upper center or top dead center, that dot is the BB for two degrees retarded uh, from top dead center. So using that measurement, uh, if we were to look at the one to the right of the UC or top dead center uh, slash, I would I'm going to guesstimate that six to eight degrees advance. So if we set our standard timing light to see that one aligned with the pointer, we're going to be between six to eight degrees advanced. So anyway, let's uh, we're going to try that and see how we go. We may just have to be utilizing that regular timing light.
some other things I've noticed uh, since I've been putting some miles on it. I've uh, my uh, oil stains that I'm seeing on my cardboard. I don't think are necessarily coming from my uh, main seal now. Uh, primarily because if you look down there at the block, you can see it's real shiny in that corner. And we go over in this end, and it's real shiny down in that corner behind the starter. Now, what that's telling me is, how am I getting oil leaking there? So I reach behind, behind the head here, and I'm coming up with oil. So, it looks like my old nemesis that stalked me on the 216 has caught me on the 235, and that's a leaking valve cover gasket. Now, some may notice that uh, that's an unusual color I have on my valve cover gasket. That's because this is a rubberized type gasket I got from a, an outfit that makes aircraft gaskets uh, located here in Tennessee. I'll, uh, I'll post a, uh, a link to them. Now, I put it on dry and uh, thinking that uh, maybe, you know, since it's rubberized, it'll see, seal better. But apparently it's not back here in the back where the problem is i'll know more when i pull that valve cover so anyway uh i may reuse it and just put some uh rtv on it and that's the only way i was able to slow down the valve cover on the 216. of course the 216 only had two acorn nuts at the top to connect uh to tighten down the uh, valve cover this has got four that still doesn't have uh, help in that back corner. So anyway, we're going to deal with that too. It's really wet there at that back corner. Really wet. Yep, that's definitely where it's leaking. It's collecting and leaking there. So, we're going to RTV it. Look at that. I don't know if that's visible. Look at that oil. That's quite a bit. And this is a rubberized gasket. You would think it'd be really good. It's really wet underneath all the surfaces, to tell you the truth. Hmm. the uh, ultra gray and it says uh, to, to let it cure for 24 hours before you put any uh, oil in it now I didn't do that for the rear end which is not leaking so I probably went about five hours before I put on that so I'm gonna go to full till tomorrow on that uh, I would have shown it, but my battery went dead in the uh, camera, and I was on a roll, so I wanted to get that knocked out. And uh, then uh, what I want to do is show some of my final tune-ups specs, and we'll go from there. showing it good or not but it's lined up the corner is just about on the one and we're at about 600 a little over 600 rpm i've not even hooked up the vacuum gauge i'm not even concerned with the vacuum <laughs> <laughs> 